Secretary Esper, uh, thank you for joining us today. The first place I want to start with you is we just reported a short while ago uh, rockets fired by Hezbollah into northern Israel, apparently, according to Hezbollah, uh, in retaliation for the killing of some of its members in, an Isra in, in Israeli shelling on Lebanon. Um, it, it comes at a moment where investors and really the world are focused on whether this is a conflict that could expand and become a, a broader one in the Middle East. How acute is that risk right now? Well, good to be with you, first of all, Morgan. Uh, let me say it's very acute. I, I, I think there's a good chance that this expands and, um, and, and will, of course, affect markets. I was surprised to see, you know, energy was up today. Um, but I think it could affect the energy markets if this uh, expands into Iran. We know from the Wall Street Journal, at least, that uh, Iran was behind this uh, terrorist attack by Hamas on Israel, that they were involved in planning and supporting and directing it uh, after meetings in Beirut. So uh, now, Israeli or an American tel intelligence haven't confirmed that yet. But if it is proven to be true, that is going to put Israel on the spot to take action in some way, shape, or form against Iran. And, um, and, and America might as well support that, too. So I, I think there are a number of things that need to play out. First and foremost, though, is Israel getting control of the tactical situation on the ground when it comes to Gaza. Yes. Uh, and I guess what does that look like? Because we've also heard that airstrikes are, quote, just the beginning. So how does this play out over coming days? And I guess is there a possibility that we actually see a resolution to this conflict if others don't get involved within the region more quickly? I think what, what's happening today is uh, the Israelis are getting control of the situation in Israel and making sure that they've camped down on all the militants uh, in Israel settlements and cities and whatnot. Uh, the airstrikes are, are being used to uh, go after um, uh, uh, Hamas rocket launching pads positions and to try and decapitate the leadership. But at some point here and soon, once they muster the troops, the reservists are spun up, they move the tanks to the border, you will see an incursion into Gaza. Now, the question will be, uh, how far will it go? How long will it last? What will its purpose be? And all of this is complicated by the fact that Hamas has somewhere between 130 and 150 hostages in Gaza, some of whom may be Americans, by the way. And how might they uh, how might they deal with them? We we heard threats today earlier from Hamas that any further attacks against uh, targets in Gaza will be met with the execution of one hostage at a time, which is very chilling, very barbaric too. Very chilling. Um, Mark, uh, this was an intelligence failure. Uh, clearly, how does it change the calculus on, clearly human life is the most important thing here, but uh, on Israel and the region as a place to do business? Uh, there was a thought that Iron Dome and the existence uh, of the intelligence apparatus made operating there a, a sort of knowable risk. How knowable is it and how much does that shift now? Well, certainly for the Israelis, it, it has a, a chilling effect on their sense of confidence and their sense of vulnerability or previously invulnerability. You know, we've seen rocket fires before come out of uh, Gaza several times by Hamas. Iron, Iron Dome is always uh, fairly effective. And I, I think there's no indication that Iron Dome has not been effective this time. But the, what's different are the incursions by ground, sea and air uh, to the point that uh, once rocket fires happened, the uh, Hamas, uh, you know, broke the, the fence line out of Gaza and ended up occupying or b being present in like 29 cities and towns and randomly going through the streets and shooting civilians and taking people hostage. That's the thing that I think it has shaken Israel the most. And I think by extension now, that's going to affect some degree of confidence in Israel as, as a business partner, at least in the near term. Look, I, I'm confident the Israelis will ultimately get this all under control. We'll find out what happened and make corrections. You saw um, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, who today called for a unity government. That makes sense. It's a good move. Uh, but you see, uh, again, Israelis rallying around their leader mm -hmm. and, and around their country now to, uh, to, to strike back.